in a world where British children needed to learn about history, but school was fucking boring. One show stood tall above any other children's learning resource and helped kids remember history facts across the aisles. That show was Horrible Histories. Horrible Histories started out as a book series in 1990, the first book being Measly Middle Ages. The series was written by Terry Deary and illustrated by a man named Martin Brown. The books became very, very popular, particularly in the early 2000s, and I remember reading them a lot when I was younger. I very much enjoyed the books as a kid. I even had a box set of like the main series and I tried to purchase like any book that I could afford that wasn't in the box set, particularly like Cutthroat Celts and the Wales book. I remember really enjoying the Wales book because uh, growing up in England I didn't really know much about Wales. The books also inspired other book series like Horrible Science and Murderous Maths. I very much enjoyed Horrible Science, although I only read a couple of the books, but I remember me and my brother really enjoying Murderous Maths, which was written by a man called Kiartan Poskett and illustrated by a man called Philip Reeve. The book series' popularity also led to it being adapted into a children's television program in 2009, which will be the subject of this video. The original series ran from 2009 to 2013, and start a cast known as the Six Idiots, who consist of Matthew Bateman, Simon Farnaby, Jim Howick, Belle Wibond, Lawrence Rickard, and Martha Howe Douglas, along with a reoccurring supporting cast. The themes and style of comedy were based on classic British comedy series like Monty Python and Black Adder. <laughs> I'm a knight, I'm a knight, and I'm a knight. And our only aim in life is to fight. When knights are around the round table, we dance where we're able. We do routines to call the scenes to put in the cable. Different parts of the show were also categorised into different eras of history based on the original series book titles, such as the Awful Egyptians, Cutthroat Celts, Rotten Romans, etc. The show consisted of various comedy sketches and songs to show kids different aspects of history in a more memorable way. This included parodying parts of pop culture, both old and new, such as BBC and ITV News, the shows Come Dine With Me and Masterchef, really annoying advertisements, really edgy cinematic trailers, and songs that had been popular or were popular at the time. Play that monkey music, funk boy. In fact, there are many videos comparing Horrible History songs to the original songs, and I've linked one of them in the description down below. I could talk for ages about how much I love the Horrible History songs, and I would love to talk about my favourite ones, but I think that would take too long and I really think it deserves a video of its own, so if you guys would like to see that, please let me know in the comments. A really good example of a very good Horrible Histories parody is the skit We Sell Any Monk. This was goofing on an advertisement in 2010 that went viral from a company called WeBuyAnyCar.com. We buy any car, any make, any model, any age, any price from 50 quid to 100 grand. We buy any car, we buy any car. The Horrible Histories parody consisted of, well, doing what the original advert did, but instead of urging us to sell our cars, instead urged us to buy a monk from them. We sell any monk. I remember laughing my ass off when this parody originally aired because the original advert of WeBuyAnyCar.com was everywhere, and I mean everywhere. They even used this jingle for years to come. This wasn't even the only parody of them either. 
WeBuyAnyCat.com WeBuyAnyCat.com Anyways, my point is Horrible Histories love to parody, and they were good at it. Even the theme song was a parody. The show also featured many reoccurring characters, like Death, the famous I'm a Shouty Man, and various monarchs, like Henry VIII, his daughter Queen Elizabeth I, Caligula, Charles II, etc, which became very useful to teach kids about history through repetition, and as we all know, kids like familiar faces. Other than the parodies, a lot of the jokes in Horrible Histories are well done and are still funny in my opinion. Here's an example of a double entendre used in a movie parody trailer about Guy Fawkes. You're going to be undrawn and courted. Courted? You will be. Yes, it's a dark joke, but I think it's still funny, and it's a good way to make the concept less scary for children. On that note, I think this show definitely falls into the category of the British being obsessed with showing their children really macabre things that I mentioned at the end of my Vampire and Werewolf video. The first thing I remember seeing from this show was a skip from season 1 called The Caveman Art Show, and I remember being really creeped out by it. Looking back, I can kind of understand why I was creeped out by this, as I've always had a pretty high sense of disgust, and as a small child, I found anything that wasn't in a diagram, that was a physical object, that represented anything of the human anatomy that wasn't underneath the skin, highly disgusting. For kind of the same reason, I had a morbid fascination with the Black Death as a child, and remember being really creeped out by certain parts of the Plague song as well. Play kills little children even more than mums or dads. A priest said it's because the wicked kids have acted bad. Half the people on the earth are simply blown away. So for Mr. Death, these will be really busy days. I don't know, just the concept of a large chunk of the world's population being killed by a disease that they couldn't do anything about really creeped me out, but I found really interesting at the same time as a kid. The Burke and Hare song also really sparked my interest in serial killers. This was sort of the first time that I'd realised that someone could kill another person unprovoked, and I remember thinking that the almost Hitchcockian silhouette used in this song was very cool looking. Speaking from experience as well, I remembered a lot of historical facts very well because of the skits in this show as I was doing history in school later on. So personally I think this show was very successful in its pursuit of edutainment. In fact, the show had such a profound cultural impact that the song Divorced, Beheaded and Died from season 1 is just a song that everybody knows, even adults. The show also had holiday specials such as Horrible Christmas and the Halloween special, which were based around festive historical events and totally didn't inspire the holiday specials that are featured on my channel at all. Of course the show also inspired web games that are and were featured on the CBBC website and were mentioned in my BBC Nostalgic Web Games video. Among other things it also led to a spin-off show called Gory Games. I did watch a bit of it, but I've never been a fan of game shows, so I didn't really enjoy it that much. The last sketch I remember seeing with the original cast was a 2014 Valentine's Holiday Special after season 5 had finished airing, which is a parody song of Love Cats by The Cure called Love Rats. That's what I was doing when I was wooing my wife Matilda. What, I never killed her. Love Rats. and detailed horrible people throughout history that had treated their spouses either very badly or had various mishaps surrounding love. Lastly, I think what helped make this show so endearing is in the behind the scenes special episodes, the cast seemed to have so much fun and have so much passion for this project, which made them seem really likeable. You're making me laugh, man. Why? I don't know. Do you Why think... would I possibly be making me laugh? <laughs> the magazine for everybody in it's Saxon, England. Do do. As long as. <laughs> <laughs> Now on the other hand, I'm going to elaborate on why the newer seasons suck. With all due respect, they really shouldn't have gotten a new cast. I'm sure they're trying their best, 
But when you've grown up with a group of people on TV that you found very entertaining and likeable, having a new cast just doesn't really feel right, you know, it feels really fake. After season 6, they also got rid of Death, which I thought was a really stupid decision, as everyone loved him, as well as later getting rid of Rattus Rattus, the host, you know, that's mentioned in the theme song. The new show also has a lot of guest stars, which isn't inherently bad, but wasn't really a feature of the original show. The author of the books, Terry Deary, did play a lot of the older characters, which I thought was a nice touch, but they didn't really have famous people, like in the new series, such as Rowan Atkinson. Remember how I mentioned Black Adder earlier? This just makes it seem like pandering and like the new cast can't carry the show on their own, which I think really does it a disservice. The songs they choose to parody just don't do it for me as well, like stuff by Dua Lipa and All About The Bass. It, it's just not really my thing, you know, I just, I just don't like it. All in all, it just seems like the BBC's desperate attempt at clinging on to something that was really good, something that has been known as a CBBC favourite kids really loved the original show. They really did. Like I said earlier, the original show was based on classic British comedy, and this is based on a show based on classic British comedy. It just doesn't have the same charm. The original show felt more like a homage. This just feels like a cheap imitation. I know I'm not the only one who thinks this. Many of the comments on the CBBC website support this idea as well. To conclude, I think that the original Horrible Histories is probably one of the best children's shows that ever left the BBC studios, and it's a shame that they didn't let it end on a high note. I watched it so much as a kid that I can quote sketches even now, and most people I've spoken to around my age have watched at least a little bit of it, it was just a standard in a lot of UK households. Now for some direct audience engagement. In terms of making videos, most of them in the past have been heavily scripted. This was to avoid me rambling in videos, as I tend to do that in real life when discussing something that I am passionate about. For this video, however, I only semi-scripted it, using bullet points to list the points I wanted to make in the video. This was so my script sounded more natural, and less like I was just reading off of a script, because that's what I've been doing. I plan on writing for most videos like this in the future, especially longer ones, so tell me which kind of format you prefer in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Cause Polos is life, 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 Polos is life. Sleep all night.